for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip with the Mad Cheese as always. Got another full offensive breakdown for you guys. Uh, this month, I'm going to be doing the Tennessee Titans. If you've been watching my videos lately, I've been doing a lot of stuff out of the Titans, and I really find it's one of the best undercover uh, hidden gems in the game. If you guys don't know, every month I try to put out a full offense or a full defensive breakdown for you guys. Uh, this is for two reasons. Number one is to show you guys what you get if you get my eBooks uh, or if you join my Join Now Patreon community, stuff like that. If you guys would like me to continue this series as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section let me know in the comment section what offense or defense you guys would like to see next month other than that let's go let's get right into the video next up we got the bench pivot against cover three just put the rb route on a streak and he's gonna have a very big play against cover three now this is a tight end right now but typically you can put your fastest receiver there i just have my third receiver as my tight end uh, this could be an easy one play touchdown if you really want to Spread the defense, you can put the running back out and put him on a streak of some kind just to keep that safety over as much as possible. And then you can see he can have a very big play up the seam because he does get past the cornerback. So a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. And you're really going to have success against any man or zone with the A route as well. As you can see, he's not really covered either. So cover two, cover three, he'll get outside, cover four also. And the B route is a really good man-beating route. Although you can see here, he's also going to have success getting outside of the cover three. So it's a very hard play to stop. I'm going to run this against a man coverage a couple times. Like I said, very easy play. Just bullet, pass lead outside. You can steal that all game. Next up, we got the corner strike. Against cover two, pretty much any zone, if you streak the RB route, the B route, Will typically get open but against cover two it's going to be especially you know open but pretty much any zone will have that effect the table route's a good play against cover three on the left side cover three and cover four as typically the cornerback will pull back so far that he won't be in play but you get an easy one play touchdown just by streaking the rb route and motioning out the b route that's all you really have to do it's best run from a hash mark but you can see we're going to have a lot of success even without doing that as he gets right up the seam there. If I run from a hash mark, I'll probably have a wide open one play touchdown. So I'm going to do that real quick. Run from the hash mark to the open side of the field, and you'll have a lot more success. So we'll do that one more time. So in that RB route there, as long as I throw it before that safety has a chance to react, I should be gone, but he's coming over and keeping me from scoring a touchdown. But still... Easily won't, won't play touchdown. I'm going to put him on a fade this time, see if that really makes a difference. I said I'll help him get out there a little bit further. And I want to score a touchdown, but maybe DeVerne is just not fast enough. As you can see, he's almost getting going. Next up, we got the deep corner. All you're going to do is put the, uh, the RB route on a fade. Motion in this receiver here and put him on an out route, a five route out route, and then block the running back. I mean, you can leave him out. It doesn't really matter. But ultimately, um, you know, this is something where you have to buy a lot of time for this B route here to cross. And now you can see you got a one play touchdown against cover three post November patch. Also works against man coverage, specifically cover one and cover zero. Let's go and find a cover one man. There we go. I mean, that play, you don't really need any adjustments. Just streak the RB route and eventually the B route here. Although we're getting a lot of. Get a lot of bullied offensive linemen, but you can see how that's going to get across. I don't think I need, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Cover one man, cover zero. Uh, typically against cover zero, you just want to block your tight end and your running back. Go to motion this guy and put him on a drag. He said it's pretty much it. I'm going to say I'll buy time. And we're going to see how we're just going to get across cover one pretty easily. Against cover four quarters, just put the A route on a 10 yard in route. It's just an in route smart routed and the b route here will eventually just you know get past it the same way i mean i didn't get a good throw or whatever but you can see that works you could also put the him on a 10 yard you know you don't have to really even do that you can just put him on a 10 yard comeback works the same way the b route's going to get open the same way i say just basically he's going to run right by the safety although i'm not getting good throws because i'm not really big on my time but it does be cover for quarters against cover two against cover two this is one of the few Plays will do a different setup. We'll just put the B route here on a streak and the RB route. Typically get open. 
You can see right there, that was a tight window because he didn't really break. I mean, that's that's not a very good receiver. That's like a return specialist. But you can see how you can have success there. As long as he gets into a break a little bit. Or you can just take the A route. Check that. I mean, you really have to read the cornerback. If their cornerback drops back, you take the underneath route. If he drops short, you take the B or you take the RB route. It's really that simple. So the A right here, like I said, I mean, I can take that catch and run all game. You know what I mean? So you're really just reading what the depth of the cornerback is. But against cover two, it can be a big play. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Just put the B route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. And you're going to get an easy one play touchdown over the top against cover three. As you can see right there, the uh, cornerback just basically turns around uh, because he's more concerned with the, uh, the wheel route coming underneath him. Next about the gun bunch, we got the speed dig. Another cover three one play touchdown against current gen consoles. Just have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, motion this receiver in and put him on a streak. I'm going to also block my running back slide my protection to the left. You have to wait for this uh, receiver here to uh, cross a certain point before it allows you to pass lead again. But you can see it's a really easy one play touchdown just as long as you wait for the cornerback to stop. Uh, I'll go to the replay to, uh, to show what happened there. You basically wait for this receiver. Number one, this cornerback next to him will stop covering to take on the crosser. At that point, you basically have to wait for this receiver to cross 31 yards, which he does already, and then you can bullet and pass lead away from the safety. If the ball leaves my hand before that point, it won't allow me to pass lead. So you can see it's actually pretty close as he's right at that 30-yard marker. So like I said, maybe the cutoff's 30, but ultimately you have to wait for, I say, 31 yards before you can pass lead again. Next up, we have the gun bunch verticals. So I'm going to do it again from the other hash mark, delay fade, slide protection. So I'm going to roll in that direction anyway. And here you can see the cornerback glitches out a little bit more from the other hash mark. So maybe it's not specific to a hash mark, but you can see how either way it has success. So this is what you're watching for with this cornerback. Basically, he's just going to uh, dumb out a little bit and go towards the delay fade, leaving this cornerback for an easy you know, bullet pass it away from the corner for an easy one-play touchdown against cover three post patch. Next up, we have the verticals. So I'm going to go ahead and motion out the B route, put the... X route on a drag, that's all you really have to do. And the B route here will get open outside of the cover two. Now you could also streak the A route to pull that safety back. But I don't feel like it's 100% necessary on this particular play. Well, we'll do that again, like I said, against cover two. You can get a really big play up the sideline for a catch and run as long as you throw that ball on timing correctly once he passes the cornerback and bullet and pass lead away from the strong safety. Against cover three, just motion this guy out here, and you'll have a lot of space in the seam to the A route. As you can see, he just gets open right in that area. Next up, we have the Y curl. It's gonna be a very big play against cover three. I like to motion out the running back, streak the A route. That's pretty much all you have to do. The A route's gonna be the biggest play, um, especially if you run to the sideline again. It's just a good play up the seam. Next up, we have the Z spot. All you really have to do is streak the B route. That's pretty much it. The RB route here is going to be the play against just about any zone coverage. As you can see, he just gets wide open as those uh, safety as the safety gets spread too far apart from the uh, the cornerback. That's really all you have to do. Against cover three, it'll have similar success, but you could also bomb it up for a one play touchdown. I'm just going to motion over the running back here, put him into a streak. Uh, you won't have a ton of coverage, but that'll keep the safety away. And then the B route here can have a lot of success right over the top. As you can see, we almost have a one-play touchdown. I'll say it's a one-play touchdown, but a little bit more speed, he probably would have been gone. But that's a really easy read. You just have to run from the hash mark. Next up, we got the RPO Alert Omaha. This is a good run play. It's a little weird to get a hold of the Y button because that doesn't typically, um, that's not typically the case. But you get a good in inside zone. If it's a cover three or a cover four, the A route is going to have the most success, or at least be the smartest play. And if it's a man coverage, which I'll go ahead and I'll switch over to a man coverage, although cover two man, not so much. Cover one man a little bit more because that line's better. But if it's a man coverage, this X route here uh, will have success. Now, that's the thing I, I tried to, you know, against man coverage, you'll have more success um, to the tight end, to the X route. But that's really going to be best against um you know man cover one maybe even man zero anything where it's aligned a little bit better man cover three he can have success also uh because there's no real flat coverage under here but um you know it doesn't look like i'm getting a lot but this can be a very hard to stop uh series of plays if it's run correctly and it's it can be frustrating rpos can give people a lot of frustration 
Next up, we have the verticals. This play here, I mean, I can just motion this guy out. And against uh, cover two, he's going to get open uh, very easily. Against cover two and cover three, although we get a little pressure there. Against cover two or cover three, motion this guy out will be the only real adjustment you need. And the B route here will be the play that gets open against cover two. Against cover three, it's going to be a seam beater, uh, which I have to see the play here. Hold on one second. Cover three, it's going to be the A route, which I forgot. Forgot, but you can still motion this guy out here just to create as much separation as possible pre-snap. A lot of times that B route there can even get open um, if you um, throw it to him really quickly against cover three and cover four, but I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to suggest that. Next up, we have the Z spot. So this play here, all I'm going to do is put the B route on a uh, streak. And again, it's pretty much any zone coverage. These these guys will have success. We're going to play sticks so that we can get um, uh, a regular cover four. And like I said, this RB route will get open outside of it. Any zone coverage is going to get outside of it. Cover two, cover three, cover four. Go ahead, we'll do that again. Although I don't think I did it properly. I don't even know. I just did That's cover for match, but you can see it still works. It's not really the goal. That's probably one of the ones that will cover it the best. Let's go ahead and let's do Tampa 2. We'll do Tampa 3 next. Like I said, this is, um, you know, obviously Tampa 2 is going to be really easy. I said Tampa 3, didn't I? I meant cover 3. Let's go ahead and let's do that again. Do that one more time. Like I said, cover 3 actually seems to be covered the best. But you can see it's still wide open, so... That's going to be opening us just about anything. Simple bunch concept. Next up, we got the middle high low against um, cover two and cover three. You can motion this guy in, put him on a streak. Go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll pick Tampa two. And you're going to see that the, uh, the B route can really have a lot of success outside and be a very big play. It can typically be going. Next up, we got the quarterback draw. If your opponent spreads their defense to try to match these wide uh, running formations, you can basically just hit them with this draw, and it's a pretty good play. You need a mobile quarterback, and there's also a chance of fumbling. So when I run this, a lot of times I will slide, but ultimately this is one of the better uh, run plays, but a lot of people won't necessarily expect. So like I said, fumbles happen. I typically try to slide so that I can avoid that. Uh, I even tried to slide there, and it didn't work out. So ultimately be aware of that. But anytime there's a really spread defense with not a lot of linebackers, you can still run this play with success. Next up, we have the, sl the strong curl. Run this against random defenses. All I'm going to do is put the X route on a streak, motion them in. Whenever it lets me put the A route on a drag, you can put the RB route and the B route on any number of check downs you want. They're not really critical to the play. But uh, this Y route here, I don't know what defense that was, but it doesn't really matter. Man or zone, it typically has that effect. Not against man as much. The drag would typically be the man read. We'll go ahead and we'll go with uh, cover three. Just give myself. Uh, something that we can see for you know what the actual zone is instead of guessing after the fact but, uh, but yeah you can see once again same thing wide open in the outside because of that drag cover two obviously will have that effect let's go and let's do that one time it's gonna be the same thing though uh, the y route's gonna get open although he's getting open a lot easier he's rounding that route off pretty poorly and it's still wide open so any man or zone that's going to be successful any zone that's going to be successful any man's going to be the drag your double slants a cover three one play touchdown it's also a very good play against cover one man but i'm going to call it just a cover three one play touchdown whether you're going against current gen or or, or next gen you know consoles whether against current gen or next gen consoles, this is a one play touchdown against cover three, but it has a very different setup depending on which console you're on, which I will go over later in the video. Double slant. Like I said, this is going to work whether it's current gen or next gen. It's just a very different setup. We're going to start off with current gen because that's what we're on right now. This is another play where you're going to run it, want to run it from the uh, hash mark to the open side of the field, but it's to the other side this time. And you're going to make a unique motion here. This is the only time on, on you're going to make this motion. You're going to motion out this tight end. I'm going to motion out that tight end. I'm going to put the B route here on a streak or fade once again. I don't think it really matters. But you're going to see, number one, these, this cornerback is well out of position. And 
the fact that these two zones are right next to each other, I think they just get really crossed up in communication. As you can see, right off the line, we got uh, Mark or Hollywood Brown just speeding right up the streak. And if you watch the cornerback, we'll go to the replay. If you watch the cornerback, I don't know what happens there, but he just, like I said, I, I really think it's because these two zones are so close to each other pre-snap, they don't know what to, how to communicate with one another because they just both end up on an island instantly in the wrong direction. I mean, this is, you know, this is a cover three one play touchdown eight yards down the field. You know what I mean? Like he's instantly gone as the second he gets off the line because this corner, these cornerbacks just kind of bug out. And I could throw the ball right now. I could bullet pass lead right now outside. And with this speed, I'm gone for an easy one play touchdown from anywhere on the field. We'll try to do that actually. We'll actually, we're gonna try to throw the ball uh, as quick as possible to see how quickly we can throw this ball and get a one play touchdown because this is something that's just you know look at that boom we're out balls out nobody's in my area i still find it's best probably to hold it as long as possible um to get that explosive animation because you never know your opponent could could take a better angle than a computer online but you can see how explosive this is i mean this is very easy if this is any you know if it's a man coverage a lot of times cover threes look like man cover ones the slants are obviously going to beat that so just keep that in mind but like i said i like to throw it as late as possible you can see how that safety definitely catches up though the longer the ball's in the air so it's really up to you when you want to throw it but it's a one play touchdown from anywhere now there was only one difference when it comes to current gen compared to next gen and that's the cover three one play touchdown so for that we're going to go with the double slant it's still the same you know cover three it's easy to remember but the double slant is different on how it beats cover three so let's go and let's pick the double slant the only thing you really got to remember is you got to run this from a hash mark uh, to the open side of the field like right here i'm on the right hash mark running it to the open side of the field you got to make that same motion in that we made in a lot of plays and then you got to put this x route on a streak or a fade i find the fade is a little bit better sometimes i feel like the fade just avoids um, getting zone chucked a little bit more uh, then I'm gonna block the running back although that's not really critical I just want extra blocking all I really have to do then I'm gonna slide my protection to the left a little bit because I find it's gonna be best for the pass lead to roll in this direction and then you can see here uh, you, you know once again there's there's an issue I've explained this all the time when it comes to uh, cover through one play touchdowns on current gen consoles they're very different now there's a couple things that you have to watch for when you do this number one you have to watch this cornerback which on this particular play and most cover three one play touchdowns that I've put out like this on current gen, they all do the same thing. Essentially, this cornerback here will eventually stop. The point of that is, I mean, the real reason that they're stopping has something to do with this crossing route. Uh, like they're supposed to take that crossing route on, although realistically, he doesn't do anything. He just stops completely uh, on this play. So like I said, super glitchy formation. But ultimately, uh, this particular play, once that cornerback stops, you bullet and pass lead away from the free safety. Now, there's a couple more things you got to do. Number one, for whatever reason, you have to wait for this receiver to pass about 33 yards, maybe 30 yards. I'm not exactly sure, maybe 31 yards, because there's some weird glitch in this game where you can only pass lead before 20 yards and after I think 31. I'm not really sure the exact number, but to be safe, it's, close, it's better to throw it like 35 yards. That's the rule of thumb that a lot of people have been going by. But ultimately, I'll show you that in a second, how it does not let you pass lead if you throw it too early. But if you make that pass lead outside, you can see it's a very easy touchdown, one play touchdown against cover three on, on current gen. So I'll run that again and I'll run it, um, I'll throw the pass lead before he reaches 30 yards just to show you guys uh, what I'm talking about, how it does not does not let you pass lead. Basically, it just throws it right up the center there. So it's a very timing-based play, but it's very easy to do. As long as you follow the, the timing rules, um, you know, it's it's not very hard to, to hit this one-play touchdown. I've actually been doing this since last year. As you can see right here, once again, throw the ball a little bit early, but there didn't even matter. I threw the ball early, didn't get the pass lead, but it still was a one-play touchdown to Sammy Watkins. who isn't even, if I had, you know, if I had Brown running that, Marcus Brown running that, uh, Hollywood Brown running that it'd be even easier but you can see I mean even without the pass lead it still kind of gets there so there we go once again like I said that's once again pass lead was non-existent because that threw it too early but it's still a one play touchdown so very easy play probably one of the easiest one play touchdowns in current jam when it comes to cover three except we got the inside zone this is spread alignment so this is going to be the best play if they're not staying honest if they're if they're leaving too many gaps inside like right here, we have a pretty gap-looking heavy defense. You can go ahead, you can just break off, um, you know, switch over to this run. So inside zone, definitely the best run from this formation. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Another glitchy pass play. It's going to this motion's guy out here against cover three. 
Uh, I'm gonna, you know, motion this guy out, put the B route on the street. For some reason, the uh, the B route a lot of times doesn't really get reacted to immediately when you motion him out, but he gets reacted to after the play. As you can see, it's another play where you can just beat the cover through right at the scene for an easy one play touchdown. Against cover two zone, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Motion this guy out, put the B route on the street, although now the RB route is going to be the play. Um, I don't know how good of a receiver I have here, but you can make some explosive plays. You can make some short throws like right there, catch it short of the safety, or you can try to make an explosive play and try to catch it down the field a little bit more. Uh, if it's a man coverage, uh, the drag routes are going to be really good. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, I don't know if this guy is really the best receiving back. And you can see the safety close. There's a little bit more speed, a little bit better receiving back. He might be able to get down the field for a one-play touchdown against cover two zone as well. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. So this play here, it's I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. I find it works best against cover three and cover four zones and man coverages. Cover two is about the only one that doesn't have a ton of success. Here you can see we have a safety kind of just hanging out out there. That could be an issue. But you can see if anything, we're not taking a loss. You could always move it, take it back inside as well. Next up we get the half back off tackle. This is a good outside run, especially against man coverage, because there won't always be a cornerback on the right side. It's one of the better running plays from this formation. As you can see, we just get some really good blocking uh, to the edge. So definitely one of the better outside run plays to go along with the inside run play, which is the gut. Next up, we got the PAF slide. It's a good cover to play as is. The X route here will just get open outside. As you can see, the... The B route really pulls the safety across or makes him hesitate long enough that you can make a good play to the outside. Work even better if I run to the open side of the field is I can probably get a good catch and run. But at the end of the day, you can see that this is not really, I mean, this outside route just basically gets outside release. And then you can see you're basically bullet and pass lead to the sideline for a very easy play. Could also streak the B route, but I don't think that that's necessary. As you can see, it's, it works out regardless as that safety is completely out of position. You get a very big play. The running backs are good under cover three and cover four zone, and the A routes are really good man beater. Now there, that was a, uh, a cover two. As you can see, he's not going to really get open against that. But you just have to keep an eye on the crossers. I typically like to play the crossers in the same direction. There you can see they drop back a little bit more. We get a very easy play. Like I said, the tight end coming across the center is your man beater for the most part. Next up, we got the red zone halfback corner. So any man covers the running back is going to be a very big play is that linebackers just don't do a very good job covering. I don't know why I didn't catch that, but you can see he's getting open. He's getting outside release. So let's go ahead and let's, like I said, I can just motion him out to get him a little bit quicker into that flat. And then you can see we're just not getting any catches. The running back's a very good route against man. I can motion him out if I want. Get a little bit of a a little bit of a cheat here, but you can see that these linebackers are not going to be able to cover that. So I find it's best to keep them in the backfield because I don't have a ton of plays where I motion out the running back. But you can see how that's just, it's a really easy completion against any man coverage. Next up out of the gun split twins, we have the Texas. This plays really a bunch of man beating routes. The A route is the only route that doesn't really beat man. Um, but the RB route, I mean, I probably want to put a fullback. Mm. It's a bunch of man beating routes. Uh, the B route here, that zig is going to be one of your first reads. The uh, the corner route's a really good route, uh, and the fullback route's a really good route. Now with the fullback, you want to make sure you put a running back in. I didn't do that, but typically that's going to be um, a better play uh, if you have a little bit more speed. You could also motion that guy out so that he's not getting in the way like the, the linebacker kind of gets in the way coming back. Um, as you can see, I mean, I could do that outside here and have a lot of success as well. As you can see, I'm having much more success. Even with a foot, look at them breaking tackles. But like I said, they're, they're all man-beating routes. That's the most important thing at the end of the day. We'll go with that X route one time. Like I said, that's the most critical timing throw would be that. As you can see, I have to throw it once he gets outside. It looks like he's covered up to that point. But pretty much all these routes be man. Next up, we have the dagger. I'm just going to put the A route on the street, put the Y route on a drag. I would say the X route you can put on you can put on a streak too, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, we're basically just working these uh, these crossers. I mean, they're going to get open. One of these, either the drag or the uh, the deep crosser, is going to get open against just about any man or zone in the game. I find that the RB route is really good against cover three, 
as you can see right here, a lot of times he'll get open uh, under the flats, but he's probably the, the secondary read on the play. I would say mostly it's just the crossers. So it doesn't really matter what you're looking at, man or zone. The crossers will have a lot of success. Here we have that man coverage. I said that wire out or the deep crosser is going to beat that. And we just basically run this all game. It's a very good bread and butter play. Next up, we have the levels Y sale. It's not a play. I'll go random. The RB route is really going to be best against uh, cover three and cover four. But if you have a speed advantage, I mean, you can even beat man coverage. You can see right there. It still got out enough into the flat. That was a man, though. Uh, but ultimately, the RB route is really best against zone coverage. As you can see, that zone chuck is really just gets that guy off of his spot to the point where the running back just gets open instantly. Now, the, the check downs, like the B route and the, and the Y route and all that stuff, I mean, the the the, po the corner route does a really good job of getting open against most zones, especially if you have a good tight end like I have here. But ultimately, I mean, these are, you know, this is all about the flat and all about the corner route. The, the, the crossers will make good check downs, but it's really more about these two routes on the right. Next up, we have the Shock H option. This play is good against cover two. All I'm going to do is put the A route on a streak, put the B route on a smoke. Let's go on this pick, Tampa two. And the RB route's going to have a very big uh, play because he just runs outside away from the uh, from the safety. This, the tight end's probably going to be open too, to be honest with you. Next up out of the trailway flex with the PA crossers. The tight end's a good man coverage beater. That's really the only um, thing that makes this play different than a lot of other plays that I put out where basically, you know, this is a good man being rack, especially if you have a good tight end. But ultimately, I want to run this against random plays and just put the tight end on the street, put the wire out of drag, and these uh, crossers will get open against just about any defense. Uh, you just basically watch, I mean, the drag and the, and the deep crosser will both pretty much get open. So you're just basically watching the high-low routes. Man or zone, doesn't really matter. You're just watching the, the deep crosser and the drag, uh, as you can see here. I mean, I accidentally hit the wrong button, but they were both open. If I go to the replay, you can see that both of the receivers were open. It doesn't really matter the defense. Let's go let's do that again. I like to block the running back too because I don't want, the, I don't want that play action to get in the way. Here we go once again. It looks like a couple of quarters uh, matching principles. It still gets open. It doesn't really matter. These crossers kill all that. Next up, we got the inside zone. This is one of the better run plays. I find it's probably best to even out the formation and shift one of these tight ends over um, so that you can get a little bit better blocking. But at the end of the day, it's, a, it's just a good run play to mix in. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's just an inside zone. I find that if you don't have that extra blocker, though, a lot of times you won't get the advantage that you need to, to get a consistent run. Next up, we have the mesh sit. Against cover three, you just want to put the B route on a streak. And uh, I say streak the Y route, too, just to keep that, uh, that safety over there. Because if you have a fast enough tight end, you can get a very explosive player, even a one-play touchdown against cover three. As you can see, the cornerback slows down to let the tight end get past uh, because he really has to react to the running back route. So watching this, like I said, the second he gets right about here and he flips his hips, I could throw that ball right now because that cornerback can't flip his hips and get back. I probably threw it a little bit late to be a one-play touchdown. As you can see, I'm, I'm just, the timing, you know, that's the most important thing because now the safety's reacting. So really watch for that cornerback to flip his hips and turn around. So let's do that again. So once that cornerback plants his feet, bomb it up because the safety hasn't reacted yet and you have an easy one play touchdown against cover three as long as you have a fast enough tight end next up we got the double post i would say just put your b route on a drag a more traditional drag and i'm really just going to work the a route and the b route one of them two should be open pretty much every single time against man or zone you're just reading the high lows when it comes to zone you can leave the route doing what it's doing i just find it's a little bit better like i said right there he's going to get open it's darren waller he's going to get open regardless but i find the drag is just a little bit of a better check down so let's go let's do that one more time. Like I said, we're really just watching the tight ends. And if the higher one's there, I'll take it. I could have took the drag or I could have took the big route. Obviously, I went the big route there. So you get a very easy play. It's just a good play to mix in with this run scheme. Except we got the power up. It's a good inside run. It's kind of like a trap, um, a trap run, uh, the way that the blocking sets up. Uh, I think the inside zone is probably the better run of the two, but ultimately this is a good play to mix in. You can kind of go in the opposite direction. Like right here, it looks like we have a lot of, you know, blitzing safeties coming in. I, I'm not sure, you know, you basically just have a counter. You don't always have to go in one direction. Like on the inside zone, you pretty much go one way. This way here, at least you have the option to go multiple directions. Next up, we got the wheel post drag. Against cover two, just motion over the tight end, put him on a streak. 
uh, and then just put the X route on a drag. You can go double drags here with the A route and the X route, but ultimately I'm just trying to get this Y route here outside the cover two zones. You can see just kind of arcs in that direction. You don't even really have to motion that guy over. You can do this any number of ways against cover two. You can motion this guy out of the play entirely. Uh, and you'll have the same effect because typically this, this safety here just doesn't you know, handle the pass lead very well. As you can see against the cover two zone, that's pretty simple. Against cover two man though, you do have to put him on a streak motion him across and now we'll have uh, the same type of result although not as explosive but still a good play you can have a good play against cover two man as well as is I mean you don't really have to make any adjustments this is just a really good uh, play against cover two I mean you can really run it as is and be successful against any cover two the double outs though both of these routes on the outside are both very hit so let's go ahead and let's pick that like I said I'll start off with man cover one um, it'll have a similar effect against man cover two it's just not going to be as good as it against cover one but these outside routes here, it's really just a pitch and catch throw. It's all about timing. If you throw it too early, it's a problem. If you throw it too late, it's a problem. But if you throw it once he gets outside of the cornerback, the cornerbacks pretty much just give up space. So I'm, I'm bullet passing and passing outside every time as well. That's something that you're going to have to do. But ultimately, both of these receivers, I'll move the ball back to the center here just to show you. Both of these receivers run the exact same route and will have the exact same effect. As you can see here, once again, he just gets separation and the cornerback just lags behind. So it's a very easy play. And the other play would be the halfback stretch. We're going to do that again. Like I said, this here, this is there's no real gaps. This is a really easy read. There's no gaps inside. The best thing that I could do here is definitely going to be the stretch. I have a cover three, so I have a safety right behind that outside linebacker. So I don't really like it running at strong side here. So I'm typically going to, once again, you can flip it. If you go against something like this where you see you have, you have uh, you know, the, the safeties in, in the box and you have the, uh, the linebacker there, it's going to be best to try to flip it. And you're going to hope that your fullback can get out in front of you and basically make that block. And you can see right there, it works out pretty well. The, the stretch, in my opinion, it's not necessarily the better of the two plays, but it's still a, a good counter. This is a perfect look for just a straight stretch because that tight end has outside contain over that defensive end or linebacker. Typically, it's in this particular situation, it's going to be a defensive end. Uh, and he's basically going to act as a double team. If he doesn't get off that double team, it might be a little bit of an issue because then the safety and the cornerback are going to, there was only one blocker left, the receiver. That's the only thing. I probably would, uh, you know, if, if Kittle can get off that double block and get down to the second level, get to the safety, it'd be great. But otherwise, my expectation for this play is probably going to be a little bit less than it normally would be. And I probably would have had some there. I was just sprinting too much. Next up, we have the PA tight end leak. So another cover three, one play touchdown against old gen consoles. So I'll put the X on a streak and I'll block my running back, slide my protection to the left because I want to possibly roll in that direction. But I have to wait for this receiver here to cross about 30 to 35 yards before I can pass lead again. It won't let you pass lead at any point before that. <clears throat> if you watch the replay, you'll see that number one, this cornerback will stop covering after a certain point. He will expect the oncoming crosser to start covering that. At that point, I'm bullet and pass leading away once this guy crosses about 35 yards away from me because for some reason you can't pass lead before that. I'll show you what I'm talking about, although I'm sure you can figure it out for yourself because if you don't wait for that point, it'll just throw a straight ball right up the middle and it's a jump ball with a safety. So you have to wait till he crosses 35 yards you can't pass lead. One of the better passing plays out of this particular uh, formation is definitely the PA tight end leak. Last year, it was one of my favorite plays. I think it was one of my top five um, passing plays towards the end of Madden 21 because of the uh, the patches made it really glitchy. It's not really glitchy like that anymore, but let's go and let's pick that. Then we're going to go, uh, we're going to start off with cover two like we typically do. Then we'll work our way back to cover three, cover four, just to show you guys all the setups that you can run. Cover two is pretty bad though. I mean, this is something that they're definitely have to going to have to patch some of these deeper zones. As you're going to see, I'm not going to have to do too much here to have success against cover two. Uh, I mean, you can run it just like this. I find it's best to put the uh, the B route there. I mean, you have a lot of crossing routes. So you can run this play like this and just have success in a lot of different ways. I mean, the A route's really going to be the read. You can see he's wide open. But I find that you can have a lot more success and get this guy open more if you just put this B route on a streak. But to be honest, I expect... This should work even after they patch this. I would imagine this is going to get patched because you can see this B route here. He almost just runs right past the safety, which is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> it's something that the zone coverages are definitely a problem right now. It's something that they owned up to in the beta. Uh, but for now, 
This is pretty unacceptable. If I throw this a little bit earlier, look how this safety just doesn't react. And he just lets this be right. I mean, if this was Tyreek Hill or something, he'd be absolutely gone. And we almost have, you know, back-to-back -back touchdowns. So that's something that if you have a super speedy receiver, you might be able to get away with for now until they patch it. But until then, I mean, the A route's definitely the play. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to just rock it to this wide open tight end because just nobody's really getting covered out here. So, you know, two, two things to take from this. Number one, don't run cover two. It's complete trash. And uh, number two, if you do run cover two, I mean, there's just, like I said, nothing's really getting covered. I mean, even the even the fullbacks pretty wide open uh, under the underneath if I wanted to, but this tight end is definitely going to be the play. So against cover three, we definitely have another um, good setup here where um, you know this play here can be very explosive against cover three. Cover three is probably one of the best defenses to run right now, even though it still isn't great. Uh, but if you motion out this A route and put the B route and the X route on streaks, number one, you'll have a good check down with the fullback. But number two, this B route here, it's just for whatever reason, like I said, these guys just don't react. And it just splits the cover three safety and cornerback, which it really shouldn't be that easy. You know what I mean? To go up the middle. We'll go to the replay just to show you what happened there. Like I said, one of my biggest issues is the reaction time of these. Uh, I mean, it looks like they should be able to close on this, but they spread so far apart and the reaction time is so slow that you can really throw it right up the seam and get a really easy one play touchdown against cover three. I mean, that's something that uh, I'll run it again. Let's see. Maybe we'll have a little bit. I mean, that was a little tighter than I'm expecting. If they just up the reaction time, um, they probably can, uh, you know, can fix this pretty quickly. But, um, you know, for now, this is a play that definitely works. So once again, safety, especially, I don't know where that safety is going, does not react to the ball, uh, which is not really necessarily, you know, a concerning because in all reality, I mean, they'd have to be on like some psychic defender level to really react to the ball. So that's not, you know, maybe they're trying to go for realism this year. And I'm not necessarily mad about it, but like I said, this this is a kind of an easy play. And then like I said, the fullback is open underneath, which is a really good check down. Nothing really gets covered underneath. The underneath zone coverages are pretty terrible. So you can hit that fullback all game if you're not feeling comfortable to throw that ball up. You can run this play, um, you know, a, a number of different ways. And you're gonna see too the A route's gonna even be open, like the tight end. If you wait long enough, he gets open to the sideline. You can you can slip that in there. So you know, I've run it to the sideline as well, which I think is important. But other than that, you can see how easy this play is. So. Last but not least, cover four quarters, one of my favorite defenses from last year, is also, um, it's really a good one-play touchdown against cover four. Uh, you really only have to make one adjustment. So we're just going to pick any random cover four drop. All you really have to do to make this play work is motion this B route across, and now you're going to have a one-play touchdown to the X route. The X route, once he gets inside of this safety, the safety won't be able to keep up, and you just basically are throwing it up for an easy one-play touchdown run and score. Next up, we got the double outs. This also works with the Y post and the wide receiver out. They're all the exact same play when it comes to a cover three one play touchdown against old gen defenses and old gen consoles. You have to run it from a hash mark and you have to put the X route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. You can put the B route on a drag just to give yourself a check down. The A route is what makes this play work. Then you just have to basically wait till the the uh, receiver passes 35 yards. It's somewhere between 30 and 35 yards. I'm not sure the exact amount because I've had some pass lead success prior to those 35 yards. But you can see if you don't throw it, if you, it's somewhere in this range, somewhere between 35 yards. If you don't throw it, if you throw it too early, which I'm trying to see if I'm throwing it at all yet. If you throw it too early, it's right here. You can see you get past 35 yards. The ball's not out of the quarterback hands. If you throw it early, you won't get a pass lead. I'll show you that here in a second. Like I said, if you throw this early, you will get the animation where it basically just throws it straight up. It will, it will not let you pass lead if you don't wait till that receiver passes 35 yards. As you can see right here, as you see right here, I probably threw it early. Where are we at? See, ball's out of my hand at about 30 yards. So that's why it doesn't let me pass lead. It's going to go straight up. Next up, we have the Y post. Against man coverage, this X route here is going to be a really good play just as long as you wait for him to get outside the cornerback bullet pass lead to the sideline. The A route would be a pretty good check down as well over the middle. As you can see, it's a good man beating route. But ultimately, the user is probably going to be covering that. It's also a good play against cover two zone. Just streak the A route, motion out the B route. 
And they really just have to wait for him to get past the cornerback because the cornerback will react to the check and release and you just basically throw this up outside, bullet pass it to the sideline, have a very big play. Next up, we got the fullback dive. So another good play, um, just a short yards run. Typically you want to put a running back at the fullback spot, but this will have success if you need to pick up any short gains. Uh, and your opponent doesn't close their gaps, as you can see. We're going to have, you know, they're actually kind of ran into that guy. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to have um, a really quick, you know, short yards run. Next up, we get the halfback toss. This play's going to be best against cover three, cover fours, uh, you know, off coverage zones like that, as you can see right there. I mean, I don't have a lot of speed of running back, so I might not be able to stretch this out like I want to. But this play here is typically going to be best against any coverage where the cornerbacks uh, pull back uh, away from the uh, line of scrimmage. That's going to be um, cover three and cover four zones. Next app out of the I-form wing, we have the PA boot flow. This is going to be best if you put a fast running back or tight end at the uh, the fullback spot. So I would go ahead, I'd put somebody like, I don't even know who the fastest running backs are, but we'll go and we'll just pick this guy. And then we'll go with the PA boot flow. All I'm really going to do is motion this guy out, just get him a little bit of a head start. If it's a cover three, that will typically give him enough space that he'll get open in the flat for an easy catch and run. Uh, same thing with cover four. Cover four th or cover four match. I'm sorry, cover four regular. So that's going to be your uh, your best bet. But you also have some pretty good crossing routes and checkdowns when it comes to uh, man coverage and stuff like that. As you can see right here, I mean that's he probably shouldn't have been able to get past that defense. But you're really just reading those two high low routes over the middle with the fullback. So I'm really starting with the fullback and working my way back to the A route and then the B route and whatnot. The X route, if it's a man coverage, the X route's really the route. As you can see right there, I don't know what happened there. I mean, I got sacked before I could even turn around. But you could easily turn the uh, the running back into just a pass block so that you don't have that problem. But it's always an issue in Madden 22 to run, um, you know, any pass play under center can be a bit of a problem because you just can't seem to really drop back. But that's something that you can definitely do right there. Is you, is you can just work your way from the RB route back, maybe pass block the, the running back. Any man coverage is going to have um, success. You can see we're having a lot of success against what I expect to be cover three. Go ahead and we'll do that. We'll go to cover three. Uh, but it looks like that tight end is having a lot of success right up the seam there. So we'll go and do that one more time. Like I said, it looks like he's having success right in front of this guy, um, which he is. So, like I said, you have a lot of cover three beaters. Your man beaters are the A route and the X route. Next up, we got the post shot. This play can have success against pretty much any defense as far as the crossers go. The A route, you're basically just starting off with the B route and then working your way back to the A route, which is the tight end there. Whichever one gets open first, you typically want to go with. Um, they're both going to be good against man. They're both going to be good against zone. Here it looks like they're dropping back, so I'll take the short check down and run underneath. Really simple play there. This play can be a one-play touchdown against cover three if you motion in the X route. I'm not sure if you have to run it from the hash mark, but I typically do. And all you really have to do is just wait for him to cross. Although here, I'm not really sure what defense that was. That looked like it was more like a, um, I'm not really sure. That might have been a cover for a quarters coverage. Against cover three, you can have a one-play touchdown if you run it from the hash mark, motion this receiver in, and basically just wait for him to cross the field. Um, he's going to be uh, an easy uh, look. I mean, he needs some speed, but ultimately, like I said, it's something that is one of the easier one-play touchdowns against cover three. Against cover four, there's no setup required at all. I just wait for this X route once again to cross, and then bomb it up over the top. Bullet pass leading away from uh, Diggs to safety. Uh, this free safety, it's really simple. I'll go to the replay just to show um, how that looks. So we go back here, like I said, this here. All you have to do, wait for him to cross that free safety, and I'm loading up bullet pass leading away just as long as he's past um, this guy here. Once he's over the top of this safety, there's nothing that safety can do. So if you go back to the quarterback, I'm already loading up the second I see him get inside. Next up, we got the Z option. I find it's best on a play like this to motion this receiver out just to isolate him on the cornerback and smart route it. You can also block the running back, block the RB route if you need to, put the A route in a drag for a check down, things like that. But ultimately, um, this X route here pretty much gets open instantly against pretty much any man coverage. Like I said you don't have to uh, smart route him, you can leave him as is. I still find it's best to give yourself some sort of check down and a drag though. That's going to be one of the most important things because this route here, to me it works no matter what, but you're going to see that um, it's still best sometimes to have a check down. If it's an all out man blitz, you're going to need that. 
Next up, we have the PA Boot Slide. It's another play you can run against random defenses. Um, the you know the B route, I mean, especially that's going to be something that if it's like a cover two man, we've gone over quite a bit. That um, that's something that you can just low throw, bullet pass inside. You'll have a lot of success. If you know it's a cover two man, I would say it might be best to put the RB route on a streak. Uh, but this is definitely not a cover two man. This is definitely going to be a man blitz. So the X route here is going to be one of the better um, plays against man, especially if it's a man blitz because it's pretty quick. But ultimately, either the A route's a really good crosser against man. Uh, the RB route here is a good crosser against man. You can see right here, it looks like we have a man cover one. And uh, we have the receiver just streaking across. So, you know, this is a play where it's really a front-to-back read if it's a man or zone, once again, really between the RB route and the A route. Here, it looks like we have cover three. Might have been a cover three blitz. Uh, we just have success right over the middle. So, ultimately, you're kind of reading uh, the RB route and the A route for the most part. The X route's your check down against man. And the B route's your cover two man beater. Um, then you have, like I said, the RB route here. That's really, you know, any cover three or cover four, I'm typically looking for him because there's another, never typically coverage underneath. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. This play here, I mean, it's there's no real adjustments. Against cover three or cover four, you're going to have the most success. Next up, we got the verticals. It's a really good cover three play, but you could also run this against just about any play. Uh, all you have to do is put the A route streak and the B route on a drag, uh, which I didn't really do. Let's do it against the RB route on a streak, my bad, and the B route on a drag. Uh, you really have the same type of crossing route uh, setup that I've been uh, going over in a lot of my different uh, plays. But, you know, that's pretty much something you could run against just about any defense. That was a cover four quarters. Um, we could go ahead and do that against man. Man cover two. Let's go let's do it again. If I didn't do that right, there we go. So, like I said, I mean, the B route's already open. The A route crosses, but that's something. I'm not suggesting that route will always be there, but either that or the drag will be there. Um, we'll go and we'll do that against something like a cover three. Let's go and just do that one more time. Like I said, this is something where everything should clear. The B route's already open. The A route's coming open, although realistically there, that was something I probably should have threw a little bit quicker. But um, you can see it doesn't really matter. That's something that you can do. It's a pretty easy setup. Um, against just about any defense, but if you have a cover three, this is probably best against cover three Because the RB route really just gets open right at the cover three seam It's just the way it discovers so you can motion out the uh, the outside receiver to try to create more separation But it's not something you really have to do It's something that I just do through habit and it kind of gives away where you're going But against cover three especially this RB route is typically going to get open right at the seam now against cover two, you just have to streak the RB route and the B route will get open above the cornerback here. Um, you definitely want to run that from the open side of the field. As you can see, I run out of space pretty quick. You can get some explosive catch and run type of plays as long as you run it from the open side of the field. So we'll go and we'll do that again. Cover two, Tampa two, put this RB route on a streak. Get this B route here over the top and like i said you get some really big catch and runs safety catches up we got a superstar out there but you can definitely get some big plays doing that trick next up we got the z spot it's another play that's good against random you just want to put uh, the b route here on a streak it's not really a man being play but you'll have a lot of success against zone with this flat and then and the route above it that looked like a man cover so so we're gonna go we're just gonna want to switch over to some of our man our zone cover concepts so Got the B route here. Like I said, the RB route will be open right away. The A route will be open over the top. Really easy series of plays. We'll have the same effect against cover three. You look at the same two routes. Like I said this is something that you could run uh, with success um, over and over again. It's pretty much any zone coverage. Now, as far as your man coverage goes, you're probably going to want to put the X route on either a comeback or a slant or a curl or a, you know a drag, an in route, something like that. Any concept that beats man. We'll go ahead and we'll beat, uh, we'll put the cover three up again. We're going to motion this guy across. This here has success against cover three in a one play touchdown capacity with a setup like this. As you can see right here, we just basically split the uh, the safety in the cornerback. 
We're going to have an easy one play touchdown against cover three. The formation I'm going to be using today is going to be the single back doubles Y off. To me, the best running plays to run are either in pistol or single back. Typically, if you're in single back, it's a running system because uh, when you're in something like a shotgun, you typically only have so many options. It's typically going to be like inside zones, uh, typically inside handoffs are the most successful. Outside runs are typically successful. When you go to uh, your single back looks, typically when you're in single back formations, you have a much wider variety of run plays to different attack points because the quarterback's under center and he can really hand off the ball in multiple directions to the running back. Things like the 0-1 trap, which is going to be the first play in this game. I love 0-1 trap. It's one of the best inside runs. Uh, the second best play is probably going to be the halfback stretch. This is going to be something where, you know, you're really just going to be playing the game. If your opponent spreads the defense to stop the outside runs, you're going to hit them with an 0-1 with trap. If they pinch the defense, you're going to hit them with a stretch. It's really that simple. Then when it comes to the third play, probably my favorite is going to be the jet sweep. Uh, this is going to be one of the most explosive runs, especially against man coverages. And then last but not least, the pass play was going to be the PA corner post. I'll probably show all five though. So since you can have five audibles, the fifth play I would pick would be the power alert bubble. Now, as far as the Owen trap goes, if I have a look like this, I mean, obviously, you know, this is something where uh, they definitely have a size advantage, but the defense is spread to a point where I definitely can have success inside with this L1 trap. You can see, I mean, the way that this creates lanes, I had a wide lane right there, although I got tripped up by my own guy. So obviously I have a huge size advantage here. They have three linebackers to my receivers. I probably could have passed against this defense, but ultimately look at the hole this creates, even with that disadvantage. If I were to cut across this guy a little bit better, look at the hole going right up the middle. There's nothing up the middle after that hole is created. And that's something you're going to get quite a bit. So anytime your defense ha doesn't have a tightly packed box, the L1 trap is going to be the way. And you can see how you can just have success with this just all day. I'll average 10 yards of carry with this play easy. And this is a very good defense. But if you have holes like this, if you have the defense spread, which this three wide receiver set will spread the defense a lot, you'll see how you'll have no trouble getting to that second level every single time, especially against something like that. It looked like a cover two. Essentially, cover two zones, cover two man, the L1 trap is going to be very successful regardless, even if they do have uh, it, it tightened kind of like they do have here. But uh, this look almost looks like a cover six or a cover nine, if I had to guess, because of the fact the cornerback's down on the right side and he's back on the other side. So let's go and let's hit him with the stretch play. Now the stretch play is going to be best against cover three, cover four, anything where the cornerbacks drop back. This play could be very successful if you flip it, but ultimately I'm going to want to run it behind my uh, my tight end because that will give me a block advantage. If my tight end is wider than their uh, than their you know their nearest box defender, whether it's an outside linebacker or defensive end, this will give me a lot of success to the edge. There I cut it back a little bit short. I think Landry was going to cut that off. So there's two ways to really attack defenses with this with this system. If it's a loosely spread uh, defensive alignment. Uh, obviously the Owen trap is going to work like right here. They're spread out pretty wide. This is something that will do a better job of stopping the stretch than it will the L1 trap. If they're tightly spread, if they're, if they're trying to take away those inside run lanes, then you hit them with the stretch. It's really that simple. You can play it that easily if you're not good at reading coverages. If you are good at reading coverages, there's another way to do this, and to me it's even more effective. Uh, if it's a cover two, whether it's man or zone, the L1 trap will be the best play to run based on the fact that when cover twos, which is what this looks like it is, by the way, it looks like it's a cover two man, the safeties will typically drop straight back, taking themselves out of the play, and that's how you get to that 10-yard level before there's anybody even close to you. If it's a cover three or a cover four, the cornerbacks drop back post-snap, typically making the stretch play the best run. So you can run it two ways. Either run it by the defensive front alignment or run it by the defense itself if you read the defense, and you're going to have an advantage every single time. Now, this particular play, like I said, looks like a cover two man. There's a couple ways to tell that. If I motion one of these guys across, in man coverage, typically the man defender will follow, uh, which obviously I was correct. So in this scenario, you have the, the option of running the third play of this scheme, which is going to be the jet sweep. Now, the jet sweep, when I run this, you'll see that the defender will not follow, which gives you an immediate advantage. This is something that they probably want to fix in the game, where essentially now I have an immediate advantage because the extra defender stayed at home and he stayed on his side. So anytime you have a man coverage of any kind, this is the play. I mean, this will also be very successful against cover three and cover four because once again, the cornerbacks drop back, but you can see you have a very successful run play against any man coverage based on the fact that it's just how the run defense reacts. They, they The outside cornerbacks will follow back those receivers the same way. You can see this receiver here, or this cornerback here has no idea until he's 10 yards down the field that I'm running the ball right behind him and getting a huge run play. So it works in so many ways. It's really best. If you have an opponent running a lot of man coverage, this jet sweep is gonna be the best play. Now, as far as the zone fake jet, this works well if your opponent starts shifting 
if he sees the receiver going across and he, he basically runs over there with his user, that's going to be a good opportunity to hit him with the fake uh, because essentially the linebacker will leave the middle. It's not going to work too great against the computer, but against actual user opponents that really overreact to this uh, this this fake jet, that's going to be a very successful play to go the opposite way, and it's typically just going to be a good inside run that can go for a lot more depending on what your opponent does pre-snap. So that's pretty much it. Those are the top four plays. Like I said, I don't really use the zone fake jet too much unless I notice my opponent is reacting. The last play would be the power. This here, the power alert, this is something I'm only really going to use against cover three, cover four. If you see your punch running a lot of defenses like that, you basically just get it out to this uh, receiver here on the bubble screen. It's not going to be as explosive unless you have a really you know, quick twitch receiver that can get up the field quick and make people miss. But ultimately, this is going to be something that you can have a lot of success with against coverages where you know the cornerbacks drop back once again. Ultimately, this is going to be all about one particular pass play. That particular pass play is going to be the PA corner post. I wish this play had a better selection of pass plays because it's a super glitchy formation when it comes to the run plays. But this pass play is pretty much going to be the only pass play you need. This entire offense is really based on the idea of pounding the rock until your opponent run commits or comes down to the box, usering, try to stop the run, and then beating him over the top of the pass play I'm going to show you guys today, which is one of my favorite play ways to play this game. I mean, it's a, it's a calculated way, and it really has a lot of success if you're good at running the football. Now, the only thing that is really important when it comes to this play, uh, when it comes to your adjustments, is really your substitutions. You want to make sure your best two receivers are going to be at these two spots, whether it's the run plays or the pass plays, that's going to be important. When it comes to the end around, you're probably going to want your fastest best receiver here where typically your best receiver will be at the other flanker spot which is going to be over here so make sure that you swap that out make sure you have your best two receivers at these two spots so let's go and let's pick the pa corner post on the defensive side we're going to go we're going to start off with tampa two and work our way back like we always do now as far as cover two goes there's a couple different things you can do the the majority of the setups are going to include me motioning in this x receiver which i said in the first video you want to make sure you have your best two receivers at these two particular spots but you can also do another setup with this play where you essentially motion across this slot receiver. And for some reason, he stops right next to the tight end. This is perfect. So against cover two, I'm going to put the A route on a streak. I'm going to put the B route on a drag. I'm blocking the running back. I don't really need him doing that. You can also put your B route on a, on a slant if you want a better, you know, a better check down than the drag. But the drag is fine. And you're going to see how this Y route here gets outside of the cover two cornerback. Now there I had a guy, you know, basically hit me in the face. But you can see he did get outside of that. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. Like I said, I'm blocking my running backs because I want a little extra pass pro, but this is a very good defensive line, so we might have uh, the, you know Buckner in our face. Here we go once again. Like I said, this route arches perfectly to the sideline. I ran out of bounds there, but you can see he got outside perfectly at the spot that he needed to be. I'll move the ball over. That'll make it a little bit easier. This play and most offensive plays are going to be best if you run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field. It just gives you more room for the receivers to run their routes. I'll go and I'll do that again, the exact same setup. The B route is a really good check down, but it really doesn't have to be a drag. You can put him in a smoke or anything in one short. I just want to get him out of the way. And you can see, though, the cornerback does react inside because of that drag, which is pretty much what I want to do. And then I run out of bounds again. But you can see it's a very a very good setup. So that's one option, but ultimately the best way to run this is going to be by motioning in the X route, putting the Y route here on a slant, and then putting your B route on that drag once again. I can block my tight end because he's not really doing too much. But ultimately, this is the look. I mean, the, the, the drag is a good check down. You can just put him on a 10-yard out route. That's going to be something that works to pull the safeties apart, which is going to be helpful. So it's really up to you which one you want to do. But you can see how this X route here just gets right up the middle of the field here for a very easy one-play touchdown against cover two man or zone, which I'll show you guys in a minute. I'll do it both ways. I'll do it with the drag, and I'll do it with... The out route, like I said, the drag is just a really good check down, but it's really not necessary considering, uh, as you can see right here, I mean, the safety, he's still playing down. At the end of the day, the safety drops to a point where it's not effective and it's getting beat over the top regardless. So this play will have the ex exact same success against a lot of defenses, but we'll do cover two men next. So it's going to be the exact same setup, make that motion. Put that Y route on a slant to, to hold that safety down. Put the B route on a drag. Everything else, I mean, I could leave my, my, my A and my B route there if I want additional check downs, but I don't need it because the slant is going to be a check down and so will the B route. So ultimately, I'm going to have a lot more blocking this way. This is going to make the play a lot easier. And then you can see, once again, even though we're getting some pressure, we're getting over the top for what's essentially a one play touchdown. Pressure is probably the biggest issue when it comes to a play like this. We'll go and we'll do that one more time. 
slide my protection a little bit. Maybe I'll, I might have to start double teaming the fourth Buckner or something like that. But you can see the safety doesn't react to the deep crosser. It reacts to the slant, and we have a very easy one play touchdown again against cover two. So any cover two, this works. So next up, we'll do cover three and cover one like we typically do. Cover three sky we'll start off with. So when it comes to cover three, I'm going to go back to the original setup I did where I had the B route on a 10 yard out route. This here is going to basically uh, create the separation I need from the cornerback. So if you're not good at reading defenses, I'll go and I'll do the full setup of block my running back, block my tight end. If you're not good at reading defenses, this is gonna be the best setup because it works against cover two, uh, man, zone, and cover three like I'm showing you now, and it'll work against cover one, which I'll show you in a second. So if you can't read a defense, just run this setup the entire time, and you'll see how this X route here will get going just as long as you have, I mean, all, that was almost picked, mostly because I don't have a very strong arm quarterback, but you can see it gets passed. I mean, if, you, if I had a better quarterback than Tannehill, it would have been a lot easier. If I can get more on the ball, I also had to walk backwards because I was essentially just trying to avoid the pressure. So all these things are playing against my favor, but let's go and let's run this again. Hopefully I'll get a little more protection. As you can see right here, we have, uh, you know, the force Buckner just busting right through and we're still getting over the top. Like I said, the biggest issue, if you have a quarterback that has like, uh, you know, escape bars or something, it would be very helpful. You can also do the same setup with that I did against cover too. If you do this, it's going to be the exact same result against cover three because the B route is going to pull back uh, the corner and then he's basically hit it underneath uh, with this route again. So once again, a very good play regardless whether you want to use it as a one play touchdown or not. But obviously the one play touchdown is going to be best. So let's go and let's do that again. So we're going to just need a little bit of protection. And you can see how we're getting over the top. Although, like I said, I don't have a ton of arm strength. I'm not getting a ton of pass pro, but we have a one play touchdown against cover three pretty easily. So that's both cover twos, also cover three. Let's go and let's pick cover one because that's the closest looking one to cover three. Again, it's cover one, same way as cover two and cover three. You can do the exact same setup by motioning this receiver over and basically making them an additional tight end. This is a very good look. Do the exact same thing I did against cover two. And you're gonna see how this Y route here, it's just a very good play against man or zone. You can see he beats that coverage there. It's got a weird animation at the end, but you can see he beats it. Now, whether you wanna motion across the Y route or not, he's going to be the best play against man coverage. You can still have success doing the exact same setup typically the slant is going to be the better play of the two but you're going to see how the x route typically you know the defensive player really runs the route for him when it comes to the post route so you really have to switch it up if you read the defense correctly the y route is now going to be the play so to set that up, motion him across, put the X route on a streak, and now we're gonna be attacking the Y route. So we can, you know, the A route's a really good check down if you wanna leave that. The B route, you know, just wanna put him on a drag, just something to basically, uh, you know, pull that defender away. But now you can see the Y route here just gets really, you know, just cooks his defender very easily. It's a much better play against man coverage than the post route. I find this setup actually works best um, if you just leave all the routes. I find we, I'm actually getting better pass pro. Like I said, this tight end here is a very good play, even though it's not a very good tight end. You can see how we have a, a ton of routes on this play that can beat man coverage. But let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's do that play one more time. Like I said, they're, they're busting around for that, uh, for that running back, and then boom, Julio right over the top for a very easy one play touchdown against man coverage. So that's it for man coverages. All we have left is cover four. We're going to pick that play one more time. We'll start off with cover for match and then we'll work our way back to cover for regular. Against cover for quarters, you just have to put B route on a 10 yard out route. You don't have to do any ad additional setup. The Y route is going to basically roast whatever safety is designed to cover him in this quarters play. Now there it didn't quite get going, but whoever's in that four quarters spot is going to struggle against a receiver. That's just kind of how it is. So no real adjustments, just put this uh, B route on a 10 yard out route. You can see the tight end would probably be a really good route too. The X route looks like he's getting open sometimes as well. Quarters coverage does a lot better against post routes than it did in the past, but you can still see from time to time, both of these routes are gonna beat their coverage. I could have went to either one of them there. I could have went to uh, AJ Brown or who Leo Jones. So while the uh, the Y route is definitely the most consistent, the X route does from time to time have a chance to beat its opponent. So keep an eye on that. As you can see, we get another easy one play touchdown right there against cover four quarters. And then last but not least, we got cover four regular. We'll have to back out and go into a dollar look to find a regular cover four. So we have cover four drop. Now against cover four regular, this is even easier. Just put the B route on a streak. 
That's all you gotta do. That wire out's gonna be the play one more time. You're gonna see how he basically just gets right over the top of that cut for corner, which is something I've pointed out a lot of times about this route. I don't know what it is, but the cut for cornerback just doesn't recognize it or drop back to stop it. You can see on this play, the safety does react until the other route gets behind him, then he turns away. And at that point, I can basically bullet pass lead away at any point in time because he's behind the cornerback and the cornerback can't flip his hips and get to it. Now, if you want to, you can do that motion. You can put that X route on a slant if you want to. All this is, you know, up to you. It gives you another option. It's just not necessary. As you'll see once again, the Y route just gets right behind that. And we have an even easier play. So, you know, he was even more wide open there, but you don't have to make that adjustment. Now, there is one more really good play, especially against cover two, and that's going to be the slot scene. It's pretty much just a cover two play. He's going to put the X right here on a fade. That fade is going to pull that safety to the side, and you're going to see how this Y route here just gets wide open over the middle as long as you bullet and pass lead to the inside away from the safety once it reacts to the outside route. So you'll see no real adjustments needed. Just put the X route on a fade. That's all you really have to do. The Y route here is going to be a very big play because the middle linebacker really just doesn't react. I mean, I can just float that up at any point in time. It just attacks right up the middle of the coverage safety very easily. Next up, we got the bench. Against cover three, cover four, the tight ends will get open. Against man coverage and cover two, the uh, the X route will get open. There. That looked like a cover two though. You can try to run this where you basically put the um, one side into a cover two side, and then the other side into the to, to the normal side. So here, like I said, it looks like we have that cover two, cover two zone gets open right outside of it. I'm sure if I go to the replay, the other side wasn't as successful as the streaking side. So if we go to the other side here. You see, sometimes the cornerback, it was definitely, he's definitely better positioned, the safety and the cornerback. Where here you have much more separation because the safety is pulling back the tight end, or the tight end is pulling back the safety. Pretty much every route here should have success against man as well. So you can see here, that's a cover three, and it was still working to the outside. So you really have a lot of opportunity all over the field. This is a play that really works well against random. Pretty much everything beats man and zone with proper timing and with these streaking um, you know, streaking tight ends here. So that, that probably is an easy touchdown if I would have caught and ran that. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. I'll go random on defense. This play, you can really run to either side. I would just say typically you want to take it to whatever side has a little bit of a blocking advantage. But it's going to have success both ways because it's an evenly stacked formation. And it's definitely a bread and butter offensive run. So if you have anything, you know, if, I, if you see something like a cover three, you just probably just want to run away from the cover three safety. But that's about it. Next up, we have the halfback wham. The halfback wham is a really good inside run uh, where essentially it's almost like a trap block with the tight end. Uh, it's something I've never really been a big fan of it, but it's something that I want to put in my ebooks because I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, have been running this for a very long time with success. So I at least wanted to uh, bring it up. But this play is probably going to work best against. Um, you know, formations, maybe kind of like this, where you have the uh, the DT so far spread apart. And uh, then you can see you can have a lot of success right up the middle because this is, like I said, it's a good run. It's been a good run for a very long time. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. Keep going random on defense. It's another good run play. You can take it either way just by flipping it with the right stick, but you're just going to look for opportunity right here. I don't know if I necessarily have the most opportunity. You want more spacing. Typically, when you run the stretch from this formation, you want a tighter look. When you run a... Uh, inside run, you want a, a more space look. Now here we have that cover through safety, so I definitely want to run it to the side as is. But you can see, as long as you have spacing inside, you will get a good, you know, it will create good separation for a run lane. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. I'm pretty much just going to put the X route on a streak, and then either the A on a drag, or you don't have to put them on a drag at all, but the A route could be a good drag check down. And this is basically just going to do, uh, you know, work off the play action. So this is a run heavy formation, so I really didn't get a lot of separation there. But uh, this is a run-heavy formation where essentially um, you just have a lot of really good deep crossers. If it's a zone coverage, the running back's a good read. Uh, but the B route here is definitely going to be the uh, the best as far as how much it could pick up on a play. But if it's a zone coverage, let's say it's like a zone cover three, um, you just basically go from front to back. If the running back's there, which he'll typically be, you just take him. If he's not there, if the user's on or something like that, then you just work your way back to the drag and then your way back to the crosser. And essentially, one play will be open no matter what the zone coverage is pretty much every time. Now we'll go Tampa 2, pretty much the same setup. Uh, I probably expect the exact same routes to be open, but here I can go with something a little bit deeper. You can see we have the same type of, I don't know why I didn't catch it, it was an accurate pass, but you can see he was wide open in the zone. So you're basically just going from front to back. You're just going from RB route to A route to B route. Next up we have the PA slide wide screen. 
going random. This here is a pretty good play if you have a, an athletic tight end. Uh, sometimes the blocking, I mean, all screen plays have issues sometimes with blocking, and probably this will work the least against man coverage, although the B route is a pretty good man being play on its own, so you do have a backup option. Uh, but ultimately, this is something that, you know, it's B route man, A route zone, uh, as I keep getting uh, man coverage zone if I accidentally picked a man coverage. So here we have a, a zone coverage. Like I said, anytime you have a zone coverage, if you have an athletic tight end, he's going to have uh, a pretty good play. This is one of the better screen plays. I would say run this a ton, but ultimately, um, you know, you have a good zone play and you have a good man play in the same play. So uh, just as long as the blocking sets up like right there for whatever reason, the tight end was in front of the blockers instead of behind them. As long as you get good blocking, you should have a good result. It's pretty consistent results with this play. It's going to do it again. Like I said, man coverage, it's going to take that B route. It's really, you know, that's the play reset right there. Anytime you have a zone, the, the screen should be there. Anytime you have a man, the uh, the the... the the A route should be there. So we get our man zero. I probably could have went either way there as they were just sending the house. Uh, but you can see, you know, it's a really easy read. Next up, we have the bench switch. Against cover two or really any coverage, you can run this a couple different ways. You could put the uh, Y route on a streak, put the A route on a drag. You'll have a lot of success that way. Um, against cover two zones, you can see it really does a good job of pulling the, uh, the safety and the cornerback apart. You could also motion one of these guys across. And do a similar setup where you're streaking. I um, mean, you know, I can create a bunch concept. Put the 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 Y route on the flat. It has the exact same effect as you can see. We're just pulling apart the cornerback and the safety. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and you can do that exact same setup against pretty much any zone, and the uh, it'll have success. The, especially the X route will have success. This play works pretty good as is, though. You don't really need to do a lot. Although the X route here, um, you'll have you know much more opportunity for the receiver to get caught by the safety if you don't put something to pull them back. Against cover three, like I say, you do the exact same setup against any zone. It'll pretty much have the same success as you can see right here. The X route gets open outside of it. Doesn't really matter. Cover two, cover three, cover four. But if I move the ball over, go ahead and I'll motion this guy over, streak everybody inside. And we're going to have a very easy play up the seam to the uh, the receiver there. You can see the safeties can't react in time. Next up, we got the halfback zone weak. Against zone, you can motion over one of these, uh, either the tight end or the receiver. I've made a lot of motions in this formation, so it shouldn't give it, you shouldn't tip your hand by any means. Uh, and then you can see you can have a really successful run play uh, behind that uh, that diamond uh, cluster of receivers. You can flip it if you want to. You can run it as is. Like right here, we have a lot of spacing going to the strong side, tight end side. But typically, you want to go the opposite way of the cover three safety. And that's pretty much the play. Like I said, you can make any number of motions here. You can motion the tight end if you want. You can motion the receiver. It doesn't really matter. The tight end, obviously, a lot of times is a better blocker. So in a lot of scenarios, that would make the most sense. But it's a very consistent run play in this formation. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Another play that's going to work best against cover three, cover four zone, man coverage and stuff like that. But you can see it's just a very, you know, it's a quick inside handoff, which a lot of formations you have a lot more time where these receivers are motioning across. So the fact that this is so quick should give your opponent uh, a little bit of a harder time stopping it. So it's going to be best like right here. We have the cover three safety in the box on that side anyway. Run to this side. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. All you have to do is put the A route here on a streak, and the B route should beat just about any zone coverage outside. If it's a man coverage, the X route coming across uh, the center is going to be your best bet. The zig without, if it's a man coverage, you can leave the zig. The zig itself, the A route's a pretty decent uh, man check down, but I like to go uh, zone heavy. Um, and then, you know, the Y route also is a good route underneath zone. So really, the streak is just a pullback coverage, and then you're pretty much just reading front to back. The short route underneath will be cover three and cover four zone. The X route will be man. And the B route should just be just about any zone coverage outside. This looks like cover two. We're going to beat that outside very easily. Um, you'll have explosive play. I mean, against cover two, you can help. probably won't play touchdown if I threw that a little bit earlier. But it'll pretty much beat any zone coverage outside. Except by the tight way off, we have the PA post dig. It's a good cover three play with no adjustments. But you can put the A route on a streak. You can also smart route the B route if to shorten that route. Um, it'll have a little bit more success, but ultimately you're just waiting for that B route to cross, and then you can see here he's just going to get behind that uh, that cornerback and pass that safety. You don't have to make any adjustments, and it'll work the exact same way. I find it's best to put that guy onto a streak, but the B route here can take a lot of time getting behind uh, a lot of the uh, coverage. 
as you can see right there, it's getting jammed up a lot. So to me, straight, putting the A route on a streak is probably gonna be the better way to go. The B route here, like I said, the only reason I was shortening it is because I didn't want him getting caught up too much. But you can see you can get a very explosive one play touchdown um, if you if you have the time and if he doesn't get jammed up too much. Let's go and let's watch the replay there. Like I said, this guy here, it seems like he gets bumped around a lot less if you streak that tight end. Uh, and then there's nothing but space here. There's about 15 yards of space to throw that ball into the end zone very easy. Against cover four, I'm gonna put the X route a drag and motion out the B route. And this is pretty much gonna be an easy uh, one play touchdown. Just as long as I wait for him to get inside that safety again. And then he gets across the formation. Even with uh, Tyron Matthew lit up in the zone, he still beats it. Just have to uh, basically, once again, wait till he gets inside the strong safety and bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond the free safety's control. If you get a good, good enough pass lead, it'll be an even easier play. I think get a great pass lead. You can see Tyron Matthew almost caught up. But the better the pass lead, the bigger this play will be. Also works against cover two zone. If we can find that. Tampa two. Uh, yeah, or, or, I don't want any more hard flats. Let's go ahead and let's go. Um, there we go, cover two drop. Against cover two drop or cover two whatever, you just motion this guy across with the X route on a streak. You can, like I said, you can smart route this to shorten it again. It's not that necessary to have all that space. And you can see we're getting a very big play against uh, cover two, cover two zone as well. One play touchdown against both. So we go to the replay once again. Like I said, this flat route here, as you can see the check and release will get that cornerback to react. And just leaves this guy just wide open for an easy bomb it up touchdown. Next up, we got the close PA cross. This is a good cover three one, or cover four one play touchdown as is. Uh, just block the running back and make sure that you roll in the direction of the throw. As soon as it gets inside the safeties at the bullet and pass it over the top, and you can see you can get behind pretty much any defense as long as you have enough speed. I'll go to the replay real quick just to show you guys what I'm looking for. Uh, because like I said, there is a glitch that's been in the game for a very long time that when you roll in the direction of safeties, they typically don't draw back as quick. Now here, the safety does draw back, but basically I'm just waiting for this guy. Once he gets inside of this safety like that, I can pretty much throw the ball. So you can see I actually kind of threw that a little bit early, but you can see the second he's beyond the 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 strong safety the only person that can really make a play on this is the strong safety so once he gets past that depth it's also a pretty safe time to throw because i'm bullet pass leading away from this safety so there's not really a play that he can make and i'm just basically throwing it to space other than that this play has a lot of good man and zone beaters if you go against like a cover two zone or cover two man i'm sorry you basically have a couple of good routes the crossing routes are all good routes when it comes to cover two uh, or any man really so the rb route the b route all these routes are going to have success when it comes to um, pretty much any zone i mean man or zone but against man your tight ends are going to be good against zone um, you're gonna have a lot of success as well. So we'll go cover three locks just to show you guys uh, That you can basically just run this so like a lot of plays that I'm showing We're basically just kind of reading from front to back and then you can see that you know One of these guys is gonna get up against pretty much any man or zone defense next up We got the halfback strut this play is gonna be best against cover three and cover four zones for the most part because the cornerbacks typically drop back uh, but you can run this against just about anything um, and have success uh, ultimately, though, this is definitely going to be probably one of the best run plays in the formation. I could flip it, even out this formation also. Like, I'm not really liking how that uh, that safety is so far out. I like the fact that the safety on the other side is a little bit closer. So I'm going to try to get around him. So if I motion this guy across and basically even out the formation, I always want to try to have outside containment when it comes to plays like this because that's where we're going to be where you have the most success. So if you don't have outside containment um, on the strong side, like I don't here because of that safety, you can always run to the opposite side. Next up, we have the 0-1 trap. This play is going to work best against uh, widespread uh, defensive alignments, uh, especially, obviously, over the middle. Now, here, you can take it outside. Like, if you have a tightly packed defensive uh, formation like that, um, obviously, it's going to be an inside-to-outside read. Next up, we have the halfback inside zone. It's another play from this formation where, essentially, um, you know, it's the best inside run in the formation. There's no real reads needed, um, except, you know, you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of a gap to the left side but this plus play here does a pretty good job of blowing open holes these inside zone runs are definitely some of the most consistent man 22 and it works really well with the stretch play so like here i could easily switch over to the stretch play because there's not necessarily a gap or i could just run this and try to take it outside uh, but without a doubt this is if you have spacing if you have gaps 
which a lot of defenses have. Some defensive have more than others. Uh, you can see how you can really have a lot of success uh, and, you know, just get to the next level. Like, they're, they're, that uh, that guard typically will try to get to that second level. He did a pretty good job there. Let's watch the replay. Early on, it didn't look like this guard was going to peel off. If I can get over here real quick. Um, all right, whatever. But, yeah, so you can see he starts off with the double team. These inside zones they typically start off with the double team, and then they get to the next level, which is why I ran directly at him before peeling outside because I wanted to make sure that he sealed that block so that I would have that space. Next up out of the single back wing pair, we have the halfback stretch. This is another play where if it's overloaded to one side, you can just simply flip it, go the other way, and have a lot of success because there's typically, um, you know, this formation forces the overload. It's not the defense itself. As you can see right here, when I motion this guy away from the line, and this is a trick that's been going on for a long time, the entire defense shifts. So it's really up to you. If you want to try to go that side, motioning him out can be helpful because then you'll get that tight end on that uh, receiver, or I'm sorry, on that cornerback block, which can be helpful. Or in my opinion, it's best to just basically flip it and run it to the other side based off the fact that this formation forces that overload look. You basically just have nothing to contest. Next up, we have the PA tight end seam. Pretty much just want to drag the B route. If you want to, you can drag the RB route and give yourself an extra blocker. It really doesn't matter. But ultimately, those two routes will get open against just about anything. You're really going front to back here. You're really going to look from the short route to the, the mid route and then to the deepest route, which is the comeback, which you can see right there. I had a, a lot of success with here. We've got a man zero blitz. The comeback's going to beat that. As I, I, I don't know what happened there. I guess I made a bad adjustment after I threw the ball. But you can see against man or zone, it's really much pretty much the same read. You're just pretty much reading the drag to the crosser to the comeback route. And one of those three should be open just about every single time. Here, probably should have threw that a little bit earlier, but you can see it's just a front to back read, really easy. Next up, we have the PAX Burst Cross. It's another play that's good against random plays. I'm just going to put the B route here on a streak, the A route on a drag. And it's pretty much, you know, reading front to back. If the running back's open here in the flat, I'm going to take that. That's typical of a cover three or a cover four. But I'm really working my way from front to back. I'm really working from the running back to the drag to the A route. The B route is really just there to pull coverage. This is pretty much going to be all that I uh, that I do here. And you can see, like I said, somebody's always going to be open. Right there, that was probably the most safe route. It took me a little while to decipher because I thought that the deep route was going to be there. But ultimately, something will be here. Uh, when it comes to all these particular plays, you can see right here, that was probably a man coverage, but I think the my, my controller was on the linebacker. i got to be better about being on the defensive tackle with this remote, just so I don't necessarily uh, run into those problems. Let's go through that one more time. I said that one there probably wasn't too indicative of what I was going to be looking at. I said right here, there's three levels crossing. One of them will be open every single time. The spacing is pretty impossible for any defense to take away. Next up, we have the PA Experts Cross. Another cover three one play touchdown on old gen consoles. You have to run this from a hash mark and you have to run it to the open side of the field. So I'm just going to motion in the X route here and put him on a streak. Then I'm going to put the B route on a streak. I'm going to block the running back and slide my protection to the left. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm just waiting for this X route to cross 35 yards so I can pass lead him away from the safety. As you can see right there, it gets passed, although that wasn't necessarily the best catching animation. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. The um, you know as far as I'll put the or I'll put the um, the B round of streak and I will put the RB round of drag for a checkdown. As far as the blocking adjustments, that's that's not really mandatory for the play to work. I'm just doing that because I find that it works best to double team. Number one, their best pass rusher, but number two, I like to roll in the direction of the throw. And then you can see right there, we get a great pass lead as we get the touchdown that time. So you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown as long as it's set up correctly. And you have to watch this guy here. Watch number one, you got to watch for that cornerback to stop running, which he will. Number two, you have to wait for him to pass 35 yards, which is right about here. So once he does that, I'm probably already throwing. I guess it's it's somewhere. Maybe it's not 35 yards. Maybe it's closer to 30. As you can see, the ball was out of my hand before the receiver reached that amount. But maybe it's 35 yards away from the quarterback. I'm not 100% sure. So the fact that I'm dropped back might be part of the reason why it worked. Next up, we have the tight end attack. This play here, just going to put the B route on an in route. You can block the running back if you want to, although he has a pretty good check down. All you're going to do is read the shortest routes to the deepest routes once again. The A route, the B route 
all the, uh, you know the crossing routes are pretty much the two reads they just uh, separate at a little bit of a different timing than some of the plays from this formation but ultimately it gives you a really good um, level a series of levels of passing from short to deep and you can see you can get some pretty big plays with this play on offense next up at single back wing tight we got the halfback stretch let's play here if it's a cover three or cover four you can take it try to take it outside i find it's best to flip it back towards the receiver um, as you know, a lot of these cover threes do a pretty good job of covering outside right now. But if you flip back towards the inside, I find that you really get the best blocking. You can typically get the edge. The outside there, I just don't find with that out that outside receiver, you're really gonna have a lot of success. You can do any number of things to do that though. You can motion this receiver over, and then you'll have two tight ends and a wide receiver, or you can motion the tight end over to the other side. Either way, um, you can see there's a lot of ways to get a blocking advantage, but I find it's best just to flip it so that you don't give away the direction of the play that you're going. So like I said right here, we have a, a definitely a better look, and you can see here with that cover three sides, same cover three, but we're getting much more space to the left. Next up, we have the mesh. Against cover two zone, you just streak the B route, motion out the RB route. It's really that simple. The RB route will get outside the cover two, just as long as you uh, wait till he gets past the cornerback and then bullet and side and uh, uh, pass lead to the sideline. Against cover three, the B route will get open in the seam as long as you have a, a little bit of a better tight end. If I put Waller at that tight end spot, it would get open. <coughs> against cover three, the B route will get open up the seam, and against man coverage is the Y route and the uh, a route the drags will be really good plays uh, but ultimately the biggest play to be had here is the one to cover two outside to the running back next up out of the single back wing tight we have the pa y drag wheel so all, all i'm going to do is put the a route on a streak and the b route on a drag this will create a lot of crossing patterns that will essentially you know the x route or the the y route will typically get open as you can see right there just kind of got a little bit of pressure i tell you one thing i would typically say to take away the way the running back from the play action so that you can essentially um, you know just have a little bit more time because this is a formation where you don't want your quarterback to turn around uh, because that's just going to make it difficult um, for him to basically drop back as far as possible because under center is it's harder to, to basically get a lot of time so block the running back drag the b route put the a route on a streak uh, if the Y route's open, I could say, you know, taking the Y route's fine because you'll get a really big ch uh, catch and run out of this. But ultimately, you're just basically playing it front to back. By that, I mean, basically, you're just watching the close receiver. Whichever one gets open first is the one that you're going to take. So right here, I mean, the B route's going to typically get open in the flat the other way as well. Although he's the only person there, so the coverage of him will be a little bit tighter. You're typically going to have a lot more success going the A route's way, which ultimately makes it to a point where you don't necessarily even need the B route, but it's good to have that check down going in the opposite direction. So here we go one more time. We set the X route. It's just going to be wide open underneath, and it's going to be a pretty big, big typically a pretty big catch and run out of it. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.